Hello and welcome everyone. Everyone who's here now with me and everybody in the future. I'm happy to be with you once again. I'm going to be working on some composition here in Studio One as always, continuing a song that I've been doing for the last, I guess this is the seventh week now, number 1.7 it says. So we're just going to get right into it. Hopefully the sound is good for you and I'm just going to quickly test that. Let me just play something. Ooh, that's low. Ooh, my buffer size is not happy with me. Uh, what should we do? Let's go here. Can we hear this? I believe so. It looks like it. I'm going to play from the top of the track just so I can um, get a hold of where we are in the overall composition and then we're just going to get into it. Here we go. section up today or we'll reorganize it to a way that makes a bit more sense. We'll see.
That's perfect, stranger. Nice to know you're here. I wish you best of luck with the work, whatever that is. Right now, this is my work. Yes. Okay, okay. I dig it. Welcome to everybody who has joined since we began. Yes, I just read the email today about the playlist. Thank you so much. I can't wait to go through it. Just tuned in. What's the high frequency sprinkling sound at around grid 70? Hello, Chi. Welcome. Nice to have you here at around 70. Where are we here? Um... This little twinkly stuff up there. Do you mean this? If so, that is this sound. Played uh, in this way. and then bounced out and reversed, and then also layered with the original sound too. So you have the forwards and the backwards going together. And it's um, it's basically a, that's that one, but another track, okay. <laughs> Maybe you mean the lead sound. Is it this thing? Which fades into these. kind of cool to hear it separated like that. Hey, the wonders of music production. I've got two synth basses. What am I doing with two synth basses? Why do I? Can't even remember. I think it was the previous one that you talked. Um, yeah, it's so hard with the chat, with the chat to be in real time. I don't actually know the reversey thing. Yeah, the reversey thing is this forward thing. It's this one. Bounced out and reversed. Played over top of the original, so together. So this is just a patch from Omnisphere, kind of like a little bell patch. And then, yeah, it was meant to be a kind of splash into this section and to give space for the counter melody. my template video, which if you've not seen, I've got a template video out all about Studio One, which you might like to check out. Someone left a comment telling me like the most important information of my life, which is that I can set the channel of these multi-output instruments and link them with the channel in the mixer just by using this channel command here. Like, I don't know how I never knew that, but my life is different now. And I should not call this Rhodes anymore because it's definitely not a Rhodes. This is like lead to or something. 
So now I should be able to adjust the panning of this thing right from here and we're all gonna be happy. So, I mean, I should probably set that up for everything. I'll just do that quickly. This is actually like a revelation to me. Um, I have been looking for this solution <laughs> for a long time, so I'm pretty happy about it. Channel six, so that must be this, and then this must be this. Okay, there we go. Um, let's continue on here. Let's hear the groovy part, and then we will, yeah, see where we get to. I'm a little bit unsure about my, um, Bill, yo, welcome. I'm a little bit unsure about my ride pattern. I mean, I like the pattern, but I don't know that it's like, yeah, it doesn't make me excited to hear it. This is a pattern I use way too much. I don't know why, I just really like it. That da, 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 just has a good vibe to me, hey? In a pattern like this with the kicks like this, it works because it's basically um, interspersed between all the kicks except for the first one. However, I would like to try a different version. I'm just gonna pull this over here for now and let's just try something more kind of driving and straight ahead. Just like a sort of thing for now. Let's just try that and see. It's not bad, it's kind of cool. Cause I often think of ride symbols like rain, like the sound of rain. And um, a technique I stole from Pat Metheny. And um, I don't know that, he, I can't imagine he's the originator of the idea, but that's where I heard it the most was double ride symbols, double ride symbols on two sides of the kit and then um, syncopated patterns between them. I'm not doing that here, I've just got one, but often in my music I have double ride symbols and they're both playing slightly different patterns and it gives this like rain pitter patter kind of quality to it that I really like. And it fills up the high end space And I wonder if we can throw in some bells on here, some ride bells. Hey, I'm gonna make a video soon about ride bells. It's like one of my favorite things in the world. Speaking of which, I have a new video coming out today, hopefully today, that um, is very different, not very different. It's still instructional video, but it's uh, very fast paced and short with a lot of cuts in it <laughs> because I, I, I take so long when I talk about things that I said, okay, I'm gonna try to make a short video and just see what happens. So. I chopped myself up like crazy. I had quite a bit of fun editing it, and uh, it's gonna hopefully be the first in a new series dealing with like specific uh, musical ideas that I believe in that I think are worth knowing about and just kind of covering them in a quick way. And we'll see how it goes. So check that out later today. I'd love to have your feedback on it and see what you think. So I'm gonna try to throw some bells in here. Um, just gonna think about where they should lay. I need the other instruments in too, actually, to know. Ah, what's going on? Where's my other instruments? Oh, oh, God damn it! I just changed the wrong pattern. Okay, let's pull this out and pull you in. You're in, kid. There we go. Let's 
back from my football days. I never played football, that's a lie. All right, so now that we hear the melody, we can see where the ride bells can go ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Better man coach, yeah, exactly. Okay, so. Ding, uh. I don't know which what the pattern should be. Maybe it's gonna sound like crap anyway, so let's just put it in first and see. Yeah. I don't know. The ride bells, wow. What can you say about it? I got so much side chaining going on, or the side chaining is so heavy that it's just drowning out the ride bell when it hits on the kick. So let's put it in a place where it can shine. Yeah, like that, like that. This one gets drowned out too, why? I don't know, maybe it's the wrong idea. Gotta try it though, right? Yeah, that's kind of cool like that. This one can be here every like second repetition. And then maybe here perhaps. try something really weird. Um, the idea just came to me and why not? We were having a, here where I live, I work at a music school and I'm doing a class these days that, well, it's once a week, uh, once a week, it's once a month and it's a music discussion group, which is really cool. We just like sit down and talk about music for an hour, like more of the kind of philosophical side of music. And we were talking about rhythm yesterday and, um, yeah, so rhythm and tempo changes came up, uh, or I, I brought up tempo changes because they're one of my favorite things in music, but we never hear them, or very infrequently do we hear them in modern music. Of course, in classical music, we hear it all the time, both like, mm, uh, what do you call it? <sighs> the word's escaping me, but just minute, small tempo changes, you know, where they just and they come back onto the tempo, right? There's a word for this that I'm missing right now for some reason. Fermata is the technical term. Playing a fermata where you hold the note longer and you stretch the tempo just for a second, then you come back. That doesn't work so hot most of the time in this kind of like groovy stuff. But we can change the tempo completely. And that can be done, you know, gradually or brute force. And I'm going to go brute force right now. Um, and just see, I mean, I don't even know. In fact, just to test it, uh, I will, I will, hey, look at that, they hide them all now, okay. I'm gonna just change the tempo now and see if I set this to like 110 for now. And just see what it sounds like at a slower tempo, the same beat, I don't know if it's actually gonna sound any good, but. Yeah, it'll work. I mean, I mean, if it, we'll see. I don't know how much slower it needs to be. Okay, well that like hardly changed it at all. Oh, I see, because my lower bound is 75. My lower bound could be 50. And now I've got the control. Two 
too slow. Yeah, too slow. We're going to try it anyway. Um, so 66 will be the tempo we're going to use. And we're going to do it on, we're going to introduce the new tempo on either the last bar or the last two beats. We'll start with that of the previous section. And just, yeah. If you never try the stuff, you never know, right? So we're just going to try it. And then we'll copy the section over. The whole loop. Yes. Get her duped. Dupe it up. There we go. Okay, and then I'm probably going to need to do like some sort of drum fill or something to make this work. So... I'm just going to come over here and steal this fill that I did earlier. And yeah, let's just try that and see. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we don't know where the time change should be yet. I'm just gonna try it on these last two beats. So the last little melody da -da 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 -da, is gonna be slow, <laughs> abruptly. Let's see what happens. Like it. How about um, smooth transition? It's a bit better. What about completely abrupt? change a bunch of stuff if I do keep the tempo change when we hit the new tempo we'll change a whole bunch of stuff to like mark it but you need to make sure we get the groove right first I might just go for a key change or something instead of a, a tempo change
kind of interesting. Hmm. I would need to change quite a bit of stuff though, coming into it. Um, I like it because it's unique, you know? It's like, I rarely hear something like that. You'd want to groove on the previous tempo a little longer, you mean? Yeah, that's a good idea. I think it will work in the end. I, I think you're right that we should maybe do it a little bit later. Let's go one repetition further. Um, and then... <laughs> Let's just see if we can like make this new groove at the new tempo worth listening to. So I'm gonna get my dupe on once more. I'm gonna loop, loop, dupe and loop. Hey, there's a new t-shirt. Dupe it and loop it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Welcome anybody who's new to the stream, by the way, if you're here, it's nice to have you here. You can always chat if you like ask a question or just say hello. Happy to know where you're viewing from. Okay, so let's just see if we can get something cool happening here in this groove. So, uh, dupe and loop. Hey, where'd my ride symbols go? Oh yeah, they're up here. Okay. Hey, we're grooving. Yes, of course. Always grooving. Good to have you here, Thomas. How are you? I'm just gonna like get rid of everything here except for the claps and see what we can do. Laid back Sunday. Nice. If you decide to actually slow down, you may want to offer something new. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to offer a lot new, hopefully. <laughs> but if we don't offer enough new, we'll see. I might just scrap the tempo change and just go for a key change. But I've got some ideas, I think. I can kind of hear something that might be cool. I need a very, very small hi-hat, like, oh, I'm using this. God damn, that's the problem. Um, okay, if I'm using this, I can potentially put my small hi-hat in Flexi 3. And let's take even just like an 808 hat. Ugh. Where are we getting this reverb from? It must be, yeah, where are we getting the reverb from? It must be external to the thing. I must have, I always forget what I've done. I do these sessions over so many weeks now that it's like, I can't even remember what I was doing, which is a little bit unfortunate. Let's see. Yeah, where are we? feel like there's no reverb here at all, so why? Oh, it's in the... I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, this is off screen right now. <laughs> I'm gonna come into here and let's take out the room and overhead as if this thing really would have an overhead. Ah, there we go. And then we're gonna make it really, really short. Tiny, tiny little thing. Shorter. Kind of like that. And remove a lot of the, it's kind of white noisy. Maybe that's better. And then let's see what we can do with it here. I don't even know where 
where this thing actually is, come to think of it, in the arrangement of keys. Addictive Drums just lays things out like crazy. They're just so spread out. Is it really up? Oh my god, it's so high up. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> I need like 30 second notes because we're down at like 68 tempo. Wow, okay. Is worth the effort? I don't know that it is. I feel like I'm gonna have to spend quite a bit of time trying this out. I mean, that's kind of how it goes. Sometimes you get rewarded when you do that, sometimes you don't. I don't know. Let's try just a little bit longer and see if we get somewhere decent, and if not, we'll call it. Love Audio Production. Welcome. Have you been on a stream before? Love Audio? I love audio too. <laughs> Let's use this bass now instead. tempo so slow. Probably my side chaining is too intense for this tempo uh, for this kind of groove now. Oh, we don't want to quantize that 30 second notes. Thank you very much. I'm gonna get some chords. 
chords in here and I mean we actually do have these they're so slow though now yeah they're like tiny of course as the tempo gets slower in a track everything needs to get bigger right uh, either the reverb's got to get bigger or the sounds have got to get bigger because yeah it becomes too spacious between elements and the whole thing loses a kind of fusion I think a pad though could be pretty sick if we put something in there do we have a pad oh we kind of do what is this oh that's from earlier right so I wonder could that be kind of cool if we like use this instead I wonder um I don't I'm, so, I'm not always a fan of like the pads that take a while to uh, uh, come in like that in this sort of section but Let's give it a shot. Oh man. <laughs> That's kind of cool actually. I over I over I don't know what the word is. I did something there that was wrong. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start on our A minor 11 or whatever. And then the bass drops down to a G at some point. This The thing is that this thing is so slow, it's hard to kind of change chords quickly, but we'll just, I don't know, we'll give it a shot. Okay, let's try it again. Oh yeah, so slow. Ah, I'm playing the wrong note. Yeah, it gives a real spacey vibe for sure. Okay, we're everybody's liking it. Okay, let's keep it. Um Quantize my ends. Okay, let's see here. That that those bass notes coming down make my face melt a little bit. Okay, um, we can modify the pads slightly to work better for my purposes right now. Let's just get these voicings though. Oh yeah, because I was playing like a 6-9 a chord here before. Okay, so great. I'm glad that we like the feel. Yeah, I like the feel too. Maybe it paid off this time.
Yeah, something is not quite right about it, but it is moving in an interesting direction. Um. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Good. I'm, I want some little melodic, or melodic, I want some like arpeggiated thing. Up high? No. <laughs> oh yeah, I turned off my. Mm -hmm. No instrument input follows selection. Oh, those are audio tracks, right? Of course. This session is such a mess. I'm embarrassed to even look at it. Um, let's get. Let's just make more of a mess. I'm just going to duplicate this again and just clean up my mess later. That's what I always told my mom anyway. And I tell Megan now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I can't stand it when it's not just arranged. I said I don't want to spend my time on the stream arranging it, and then I don't work on it during the week, and I think, ah, I get back here and it sucks. Um, Let's open this up and see if we can find some kind of cool preset that I've made. Maybe I want a pluck of some sort. Uh... Max, what do you think about an S1 feature where if you made updates to your template while working on a track, you'd like to keep it saved? That would actually be amazing. Amazing. I don't know how you make that work, but like, honestly, that would be the best. If you just make that on like the PreSonus suggestions page, I will upvote that for sure. It's actually not bad. Hey, this sound reminds me, Megan, remember, I have a song from a long time ago called The Birthless Mind, which is like a, I don't know, dubstep -y, trap y kind of thing. And it has almost this exact sound at the beginning of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll play it sometime here. I'm PreSonus S15 Pro user too. That's great. Love. You're in the right place. Today I turned off the DVR on the stream, so I don't think people can be behind live but you can always check this happens so often i don't know all the mechanics of it some people be some people become a few minutes behind what's actually live and it becomes hard to respond to it it's just so you all know flippity plunkers <laughs> this one's called i love that <laughs> microtubules So hard to play on time when the buffer size gets big, right? Because you get the latency in the sound. And... This isn't quite the one I want, though. Adele Carrillo, thank you. 
I was a little in recording with tape decks. I did not envision this future. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Welcome, Adele. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, you like the square wave thing? I'm still looking for something. This is maybe a little bit more on track of what I had in mind. So let's just get the part down first and then we'll try to actually make something of it. See my tempo up here? It's 66.2967. Who needs four digits of granularity in their tempo? I mean, maybe film composers, I guess. That's the only thing I can imagine, but four digits? Four decimal places? Come on. <laughs> you can literally make a song in the park. You can make a song in the park. <laughs> what do you mean? With tape decks? Need these 30 second divisions again. Oh, yeah, with technology. Speaking of which, one thing I like, I've always wanted, always, okay, in the past couple of years, I really wanted to get because. I don't know, it just looks like so much fun, I kind of have a fantasy about it, is um, something from Teenage Engineering. Do you guys know that company? They make like the OP1 and the OPZ little standalone units of music production that are just so funky and so cool. And I would, I just fantasize about that, that I could like not have to sit at this like massive battle station that I have here. And just to make a sound, I have to open like five apps and all my plugins and stuff. Like it's cool, you can do anything you want, but also it's not cool. Uh, because it takes so much time. Whereas like a guitar, when I play guitar or piano, you just sit down and make the sound. Something about that, about the OP1, um, attracts me because, yeah, it's like electronic sounds, but they're right here, nothing else. You could be on the couch, you could be in the park, you could be in a hammock, you could be wherever, and just like making beats within the limitations of the unit itself. I really like that. Paul Cooper, hello. I'm actually looking forward to your drumming series. That's wonderful. Have you seen the first one? I assume. Okay, this is way too busy. This is actually not going to work like I thought it would. Or maybe, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is it too busy? After a bit, I'm also gonna uh, go and duplicate it. Refraining from using the lingo again. So we're gonna call this blips left and blips right. The amount of times I have tracks named blips in my songs is actually insane. I have so many blips. <laughs> This seems to be a bug in S1. I once had a track with almost 30 weird tempo changes like this one automatically inserted by Studio One. Yeah, this uh, this uh, super granular tempo thing you mean? By the way, um, Julian, I said, I said that quite a while ago. I wonder if you're actually live with us or if you're just like now commenting on it. I'm not quite sure. I'm always curious about that. Um, okay, so we're gonna pan you left. We're gonna pan you right. Okay, now you sound like you're on track with us, so... 
<laughs> that sounds so funny without the beat in there. Hey, bum bum ba dum bum bum ba dum. Okay, and let's just harmonize these. And because what else? What else do you think I expect me to do? Of course, I'm going to harmonize them. So joyous. These are going to have to reflect the other chords as it comes down, but yeah, totally. I understand that not everyone is <laughs> keeping their eyes glued to the screen, and that's perfectly fine with me. <laughs> okay, so... Alternate these, maybe? tell this to get this exactly like I want is going to take probably more time than I want to spend on stream doing it. I'm just going to get a rough approximation right now. Um, I have a project open on the other screen. That's cool. Does it have to go up at the end of each bar? Would every other work well? That's actually a good idea too. Thank you. So you mean like or keep it straight. It's an interesting idea, either way. Try it like this for a minute, and I don't actually know if it's gonna sound so great. Let's see. It sure looks cool, though. The MIDI pattern looks cool. That's a good sign. Sounds like a, what do they call that? Tropical house kind of song right now. <laughs> yeah, do a whole track just by visually. Yeah, how does it look exactly? Gala ask, what's that mean? Yeah, it sounds so happy. I'm not sold on the whole thing altogether, honestly. Like the this little part I'm trying to write, like it's okay, but I don't know. Let's get some perspective here. Let's come from uh, the beginning of the groovy section. 16 concurrent viewers, what? I don't think that's ever happened before. Welcome to everybody. <laughs> Big numbers for old Max. Actually, this 
about this bass riff. Maybe do that at some point. Come back to this groove, but play it with real instruments. Hey, there we go. Neil, you made it. Wow. Welcome. Let's celebrate with the bakery goods. Yeah. Sounds great. Whoa, that's a trip, mate. Yo, okay. So with some like extra transition stuff going on there, it will work. Uh, the tempo change. It's going to take some finessing to make it particularly smooth. And then it's Need a bigger snare in there as well. Um, munching on my microwave popcorn watching the stream. Hell yeah. I'm a popcorn monster too. And we we recently got a popcorn maker here, like not, not microwave style, but like a uh, whatever air popper. It's the shit. So good. What can you say about popcorn, hey? It's amazing. Some of the things humans have invented in terms of food can you believe popcorn? You just take corn and you just heat it up and then it's just like amazing. That's all it takes. Come on. I'm going to mute these little blippers for now. I don't know what it is that, yeah, the first time someone saw popcorn for sure. What a trip. not remain so prominent in order to better hear the new elements. Interesting idea. Yeah, interesting idea for sure. Um, and possibly even play it on a different instrument, right? Maybe even like mute it for a bit, I wonder. It might lose continuity though. That's actually kind of cool, like just to go nothing for a little bit. Um, yes. Kind of cool indeed. Let's try something with that. How about, um, how about, I wonder how does the resolution of um, Studio One look to you guys on the stream on your end? Do you see the text clearly or is it blurry? I'm running like a higher than 1080p monitor and then I've like mapped the window to 1080 and so I don't know if that like blurs the text for you or anything or whatever. It looks amazing. Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So we're just going to add a bus for these guys. We'll call it lead bus. And then on the lead bus, we will send to a it's got like diamonds. <laughs> you always got the best phrases, Thomas. Watching on mobile, so it's tiny on my end anyway. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's pretty high quality. Okay, good. I'm glad. Um, something I want to try, actually, not in this song, just completely separate to this. I mentioned I've got a new video coming out today, but I'm always curious about the kinds of videos people want to see. Um, I'm trying to, of course, always find a match between things I love to do and want to talk about and also what all of you are interested in hearing about. Um, I did post a little thing on my YouTube community tab thing. There's a little poll. I don't know if you guys have seen that. You can like vote on which kinds of videos you'd like to see. A, that would be amazing if you wanted to, to do that so I could just know a bit better. But B, I've got another idea and I'm curious if this would be of interest or not, I'd like to make a little page online where I just write down all the ideas I'm considering for videos. And then like, you guys can just whenever you want, just vote on all the ones you would most like to see. And that will help me like have a 
good flow. And I can just keep the page up continuously and they can all like amass votes over time and I can know what I want to create because sometimes I wonder about that, what would be best to do. Um, good, okay. So what was I just going to try to do here? I just got caught talking. Oh yeah, right. I'm going to do this big verb. So we're going to solo these two leads and then uh, we're going to fade in this big verb, edit the automation. I'm just assuming that big verb means actually big and it's going to work. I don't really know, but let's see. Oh, yes, that's it. Yeah, if people know about it, exactly. The, I don't even know how many people see the community kind of posts on YouTube. I don't see them for my subscriptions because I don't go looking for them. I've had I have had a lot of votes a lot. I've had a number of votes on it so far. So some people do see it. Um, I would need to make a video though on the like specific if I made a page where we could vote about it. Um, yeah, I'd probably make a video talking about it. Okay, um, let's see what this is like in context now. Hey, thanks, Bill. Oh my God, that is so much better. And then, um, please show us how you get such an amazing overall space with all these reverbs and delays you're losing, you're using at least one fine day. Okay, of course I will. I would like to do a series on reverb. I have a lot of thoughts on reverb. It's just one of the coolest effects, right? I mean, I've probably said this before. I feel like every time a new person comes to music production and you hear reverb for the first time, you say, Hey, let's do that. Let's do that all the time. Let's put reverb on everything. At least that's what I thought. Um, but yeah, like great balance of frequencies plus good reverb gives good sound. That's the short version. How do you do that? Well, practice for a lot of years maybe, but also there's some tips, of course, I can share. Um, okay, so let us... Oh, I haven't been using battery in this track at all, and I keep like finding places to use it. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and do it, but let's see. Do you EQ your verbs? I do. Um, Thomas says, I tend to like lengthier detailed vid videos of well-structured and time-stamped in sections, although I'm sure m more work on your end. No, that's fine. I, I definitely have a hard time making short videos. Making this new one I'm releasing today that's like less than two minutes and 30 seconds was like, oh my God, is this even possible for me to do? So it was kind of a fun challenge, but like, yeah, I always talk way too much about stuff. So when I went to like go make that drum, when I went to go make the first drum series video, the realistic drum programming one that I just released, I had a, I had an intention of making it less than 20 minutes. And then I finished recording it one day and it was over an hour. And I said, God damn. So I went and recorded it again the next day and it was exactly the same length, over an hour. <laughs> so then I chopped it down to like 40 minutes again. I thought 40 minutes, who's going to watch a 40 minute video? But you know, that's just the way I can, only way I can do it. Um, okay, I'm going to come in here and just grab a thingy, a noise symbol. And we'll just pull this in here in the drum somewhere. Do I already have some of these? I want to say that I do. Yes, I'm definitely thinking of doing a synthesizer series, Paul. Absolutely. I've really got a lot to say about <laughs> synthesizers, so um, I would love to do that. And we were talking last time on here about, <laughs> about making a synth pack called, um, what was it? I think Thomas suggested uh, Pretty Synths for Soft Boys, I think was the name we came to. Could, could be Pretty Synths for Soft People, Softies, Pretty Synths for Softies. I like making Pretty Synths. Um, that's my specialty. So I'll probably do a series on making beautiful synths and then... Uh, we'll see where it goes from there. <laughs> and girls too, yeah. <laughs> hey, that sounds pretty sick. Okay. <laughs> okay, so when you... When I'm using symbols, um, whether, the, whether they are 
electronic symbols like white noise stuff like this or just regular symbols. I'm often trying to get the kick to interact with them because when you take an acoustic kit and you process it through a, um, what's the word, wide band, single band compressor, a standard compressor as opposed to a multi-band and you like really smash the thing, you get this awesome effect of kind of side chaining all the other elements in the kit against the kick without even having to set up a side chain because the kick has so much energy in it that it causes the cymbals to be ducked in volume every time the kick hits. So when you smash a cymbal and hit the kicks, you get this, you know, fading in and out of the thing. Um, stranger, hello. We're, we're working on a tempo change right now in a, new, in a new section here. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking this crash that I've just put in here, noise crash, I'm going to run it through my instrument bus instead of my drum bus so that it gets side-chained by the kick. Now this might be too intense in this case, we're just going to have to feel it out and see. Actually it sounds pretty sick. Where did my pad go? Does it take play? Oh, there we go. Popcorn and pretty sense, yeah. I need to customize my pad synth here so that it um, can do more of what I want. Right now, it, it dulls out too fast. Like it sounds cool, but I, there's some other stuff I'd like it to do. So I'm just gonna duplicate this complete. Oh, every time I do that, it just raises my stress level of seeing all these disorganized tracks. Okay, let's get rid of this and let's just do a little bit of tweaking on this. The idea is that I want it to, I want the decay to be longer. Uh, okay, let me think about this. I see, so that's what we've got that doing. Oh, it's got rhythm built into it too. Kind of, like, not really. Okay, so let's try this. Um, let's try making the decay much longer. And then making it legato which means it won't re-trigger when I change notes. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I'm on 5.1 now actually. I've got my... Um... What's the main thing? Why, why, did I upgrade, why did I upgrade to 5.1? I can't even remember what it was now. I've been kind of engrossed in other things. There was some reason, some like main thing that happened that was cool. So when this bass note changes, I'm gonna try and alter these chords to fit. Um, and for that, I'm gonna think about guitar-wise. You guys don't know, guitar is my primary instrument. Um, sometimes it helps me to, th to think about it as a guitarist. the bass line is descending I'm just thinking what chord should I put on this G sharp note I'm probably 
probably something like that, or perhaps that. Um, could be parallel, that's something I never do, which is actually sometimes really sick. Parallel with uh, opposing melody motion. Uh, even more opposing, how do we do it? We'll just try it. Try it on the keyboard and see. Maybe we should put a guitar in there at some point. Um, so when does the bass actually drop? It goes by so fast, I'm not even sure it's worth doing, but let's try it. So you need to move to here. Let's get on to the eighth note business. Yeah, okay, let's do it like this. Oh, actually, I've got an interesting idea. So, ah. that melody ba -da -da -da. um and this will be perhaps a c chord of some sort ah c add nine Does it just start? Why doesn't it fade in? It's interesting. Yeah, what's going on there? When I play it, it fades in. But when it plays here, it just... Okay, now it fades in. Whatever. And it clicks. Need a higher poly count, probably. Nice chord changes, though. I don't know if they're going to be heard. Not really. So maybe we need to make our decay even bigger. doesn't come till later. Right, so we need to actually move these over. Here's a cool move. I don't know if you guys have seen this before. If you have two melody or two melody, two MIDI notes that are kind of next to each other um, that could kind of represent the same melody, meaning they're close to each other melodically, and you hold option when you drag the end, it drags 
both like this. I don't know if you can see what I mean, but you can like displace uh, the elbow of the change at the same time. You can do it from multiple notes at a time, so you can like move chords that way too. It's actually pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, this sound, speaking of chords, is like one of my new loves. Uh, let's see if I can... Normally, if you're in a minor key, you know, you can play... Oh, that's so much reverb, but whatever. And you play the five, the five chord major, right, to be like a dominant that classical sound. Normally, if you're gonna put some extensions on that thing, they're gonna be altered. At least that's the way that I've always done things. So like if I'm gonna put this is my A minor, going to an E7, if I'm gonna put extensions on the E7, they're probably gonna be like a sharp five and a sharp nine. Going, you know, but if I put a natural nine on those things, then wow, I love that sound. I don't know what the best voicing for it is exactly, but uh, this maybe too. That note, I've got it in, in the chords we're playing here. The voicings are different though. It's something like, um, that's my first chord. I'm going to the E, I think I'm going something like this into this, what was that? Could have gone there. But anyway, yeah, you have five chord in a minor key, put a natural nine on it and profit. That's the general gist of it. Put a sharp 11 on this one probably. for a little bit, sorry. That's your little interlude for a minute there. Okay. Back to the task at hand. Let's see what this um, transition is now sounding like. By the way, guys, if you haven't already, if you want, if you have, if you are enjoying the video, you can always like it. That really helps me out. Um, if you're not enjoying it, definitely do not like it. But if you are, you know, helps the channel, helps the streams reach more people. And of course, I always appreciate the support. for this repetition, but we'll get to that afterwards. So yeah, I mean, we have to obviously have to do a bunch of stuff in here, but like, it's pretty cool. I started this track seven weeks ago. Can you believe it? Wow, almost two months. Gosh. This is number 1.7, it tells me on my title, so that means seven weeks for me. I'm probably, all, I'm not gonna work on it so much longer. I'm hoping maybe just another couple weeks at most, and then I wanna switch it up. Thank you, love, or Paul. Paul, thank you, Paul. <laughs> Hello, 
I don't think I've ever seen you here before. Welcome, if you're new. Good stuff as always. Thank you. Uh, let's see if we can get a bigger snare to put in this section. Because right now, we're using this and this. Which is fine. But I think this is where battery is going to have to come in, right? Because we've probably already used up most of our stuff in the kit. Yeah, so, okay. To the battery mobile. You like that? Batmobile, you know. Okay. Hey, that looks so much nicer. Really enjoyed the drum sampling video. Oh, that's great to hear. Thanks. How did you find the length of it? Do you think it's too long or do you like that kind of long video? Thank you, love. <laughs> You're welcome, sweetie. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking when I say it too. <laughs> okay, someone's got it. The battery mobile. Um, okay, let's just... Oh, because I'm not using my template in this. I have to make it all again. Oh my god, it's a nightmare. Okay, let's go instruments. Oh, and I recently just got some new instruments that I'm so excited to play around with, which is the output stuff. Um, I've, having, I've had Arcade for a while, of course, but now I've got some other stuff from Output that I am so stoked to try out. We'll do that on a stream one day. Um, for now, battery, battery. Okay, if you've seen the drum sampling video, you should probably be familiar with this guy by now. I actually cut out a whole lot of stuff. Uh, it's good length for you, Paul. Okay, that's good to know. I cut out a whole lot of stuff from the drum programming video um, that had to do more specifics with battery that I wonder if I should go into that at some point because battery can do so many cool things that don't apply directly, like it's so unique that I, I wouldn't want to just, yeah, put it into that video, but it might deserve its own video. There's so many cool articulation, humanization, mixing moves you can do in battery. It's like actually the best. I like the format of the video and the length. Appreciate the depth. Okay, well, this is good Good for me to know um, that people like it. I'm, I'm kind of like nervous about it sometimes because YouTube culture is so like fast, you know? And that's kind of what my new video is today. But actually, I, I enjoyed making it. I enjoyed challenging myself to make a, a fast one like that. So I will uh, absolutely continue to do the super in-depth big stuff. And then I'll probably play around with the short kind of more fun ones as well because I don't know, I just like it. Um, okay, let's grab a snare. Let's grab something big. I'm thinking... Let's listen to it. It's not terrible with the small snares, honestly, but... Um, whatever. Sorry about this. <laughs> oh, actually, I have, an, I have a whole section called New Gen of new samples I've found in the last, like, year or something. Maybe we'll use that instead. A snap, hey? That could be interesting, too. No, Presonus doesn't... has never contacted me or looked me up or anything. Um, maybe someday. <laughs> Actually, this... It's got the reverb baked into it. So I might just uh, shorten that quickly and then we can put our own reverb on there. Where are we here? It's going to be kind of weird. Let's just try it and see. Um, 
I'm just gonna take a very lazy approach for now and oh my gosh, there's so much stuff here. And I'm gonna send this to the big verb and just pray. Okay, no, <laughs> not what I wanted. Actually, it's kind of cool, but. cool too. Without the template, man, it's just so annoying. Okay, let's just make a new one. Uh, make a new one, Max. How do you do that? How do you make a new send? <laughs> Add effects channel. Okay, so we're going to call this big snare. How do you teach envelopes? What do you mean exactly? Like how, how do I teach them or how do you use them? I'm not exactly sure which one you're asking about. Okay, so here we go. Both. <laughs> okay. Um, I will probably teach about envelopes when I start doing a series on synth programming. And then, um, I mean, envelopes are amazing. It's like a essential tool. So yeah, I'm, I'll definitely do a series on it and we can talk about it then. It's kind of hard to, to talk about it just out of the blue on like, with nothing to use it on, but we will get there. Yeah, I have tried XO. I tried the trial of it. I love everything about it, except you can only use eight sounds at a time. So I can't use it, unless they've changed that by now. But you can only have eight samples loaded into it at a time. So is this snare gonna work? Not in its current form, but we'll see. Sounds like complete garbage. Nope, 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 nope. Actually, this is kind of interesting. A rim shot could work. Every second time, maybe. Um, Siyun, are you talking about like this this envelope here, this volume envelope that I was tweaking a second ago, like how I would use that for different um, instruments? But, but for different instruments, I assume there's a different way to approach for the use of envelopes for drums. Yeah, of course, it's super different, super different. Really, it's it's all about, um, and I see there with the, uh, yeah, every second time kind of boring. Yeah, I think so too. I need to like, I need to do something different. It's not every time and not every second time, maybe just like every fourth time. Um, so much of my philosophy on music production and probably music in general has to do with all of the answers are given to us in the music we listen to in the sounds themselves it's just a refining of our listening to ask ourselves what we're really hearing it reminds me kind of of like the um the way that people talk about painting still life or drawing realistic drawings is that the more that you can draw what you see and not what you think you see, the better the thing will be, or the more realistic it will be, that is, right? That we think we know what the cup looks like, but we only have to look. It's exactly that angle, exactly that shading that we see, but our, our mind deceives us a bit. Same with here. If we can just develop a kind of hearing where we don't imagine what we're hearing, but we listen exactly. How does the envelope of that instrument fall naturally? How does that, what is that reverb doing? What, you know, it's, it's actually all given to us in the music we listen to. It's just a matter of tuning our ears in that way. Um, and that's really all I'm ever teaching. The, the ideas I've, I've come up with for music production are all generated that way. Are you using the Atom SQ? No, I don't have an Atom actually. Um, I play all my drums on my keyboard, and welcome by the way. Um, I play them all with my fingers on my like MIDI keyboard for the most part. I would love to try and add them though sometime. Maybe Presonus will send me one one day. <laughs> um, 
You like it, yeah, and you'd like to get one. Yeah, I think so too. I think it'd be fun to try. I wonder about putting one of these claw sounds right here. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. That's the secret. That's the secret to so much of learning music, of learning melodies, of learning chords, writing bass lines, is just really attentive, open listening to, to the music you love. It has all the answers uh, already right there. Um, I've been wanting for this two months. What, you just got one now? You say you've been wanting it and you've got one now and you like it? Feels good, hey? Oh, yeah, Megan told me that sometimes when I sing high, it gets super loud in my mic, so sorry if that came out super loud. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you like it. I would like to get one myself. I'm going to hold out and just hope that someone sends me one one day. <laughs> There's so many cool things to buy with music that it's like you really got to pick and choose. I see. interface do you have and why that pick? I have um, a discontinued PreSonus interface. It's called the Studio 192 Mobile. They have a new one now. I don't know if it's still called the Studio 192. I love it. It's actually amazing. I've got it because it's PreSonus and so it interfaces with Studio One really well and also it is it has DSP built into it. So it has compression, a gate, an EQ, and a limiter built into the inputs. So without even having to process on your computer, you can process in the interface before it hits your computer, which is what's happening to my voice right now, actually. It's running through a compressor, a gate, an EQ, a limiter before it even gets into my streaming software and then gets sent to you guys. So I do that with my guitar, with everything that I'm running it through. I um, kind of take some load off the computer that way. Do you have perfect pitch or a really good relative pitch ear? I don't have perfect pitch at all. Um, my ear when I was younger was bottom of the barrel, truly bottom of the barrel. I went to a singing lesson from my first time when I was like 13 or something like that. And um, with all my hopeful dreams of being an amazing singer. And I went and my teacher played a note, you know, somewhere down here. And he's like, match this, just sing this note. And I was like, do, do, do. <laughs> like this over and over and over again <laughs> and so much so I eventually gave up I gave up for a number of years on trying to sing on trying to hear well trying to work out songs by ear I thought like I, I'm just not cut out for this my ear is complete garbage it takes me so long to figure out a chord when I hear it when I hear it in my mind I can't work it out I can't even figure out melodies you know that was my issue it was really really bad and then when I was a bit older maybe 18 or something, someone online mentioned the importance of ear training. And I thought, you know, I never really thought too much about that. Maybe I should get into it. And that like changed my life, man, let me tell you. Like ear training became an obsession for me. I wanted to be able to know everything I'm hearing so that I don't have to spend any time working it out, both for the pleasure of just 
knowing it and also for the efficiency of doing it, of being able to uh, work quickly. So I've spent a lot of time ear training and um, it's decent now, my ear's decent now. Most of the time I know what I'm hearing melodically and harmonically, rhythmically. I can tell what the chords are, what the key is. You know, I can't tell what the specific notes are though because I don't have perfect pitch. If I know what one note is, then I can name every other note. I need to have a reference pitch and I can do the rest of them. But if I don't have that, I'm screwed. Or I'm not screwed. I can talk about it in numbers. I know that I'm hearing a five or I'm hearing a two minor nine chord or whatever, but I just don't know what the actual pitches are. Could you say again the interface name? It's a Studio 192 Mobile. I can write it here. But ear training, wow, like really, if you haven't been doing it, there's no better time than now. It will change your musical life, I can tell you. Um, yeah, I use, I've used almost every single ear training app in the app store, trying to find the best ones. And I can give you two recommendations. If you wanna train melody, you can use functional ear trainer. If you want to train everything else, use Complete Ear Trainer. They're phone apps. Make sure you use headphones because the phone speakers distort the sound. Um, but it's actually amazing. And uh, there's some other techniques too that are good to know about, but those are a great way to start. I do talk quite a lot about ear training in my course, Musical Warp Drive, uh, which I think that just it's the link is in the description of this video. You can check it out. Um, yeah, because ear training is huge, huge, huge for me. So um, I will always talk about it. <laughs> if anyone ever asks, I will go very in depth about it because it's so important to me. Okay, so I added this little echo. which I like, it's, I'm probably gonna maybe turn it down a little bit, but I'm probably gonna maybe, probably gonna maybe turn it down, guys. Uh, let's just. Let's do it with the other one as well. The harmonies, it's probably going to be too much to harmonize this, but, you know. Here we go. offset these Think about that. What do you think about these offset ones? Should we should I keep it on them synced or the offset? It's kind of interesting. Um, do you have a reference in your mind that you use to find the pitch, or you have to use a piano or something? I mean, if I don't have any pitch at all, um, and I'm away from all my instruments, do I have any way of finding the pitch? No. I do know a couple of things. I know how low I can sing usually on a given day, and so when I sing my lowest note, I can roughly approximate a B or a C, depending on how I feel that day, and then from there I can get it, but not really. When I was a teenager, um, I actually bought a course, believe it or not, on perfect pitch training, trying to like make it happen, not realizing that no adult has ever learned perfect pitch in the history of recorded <laughs> people doing things, but whatever, I went for it. I tried for quite a while and really like would listen to like a pitch 
over and over and over. A, 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 A. I got this. Come back like 20 minutes later and it's gone. For months, I would try that and I made zero progress. So I stopped. <laughs> I like the offset a lot. Good. Okay. I like it too. It's kind of cool. It clashes with one of the notes in there. Um, this one. That's actually pretty sick. I like the way it goes up like that. Yeah, Stranger, that's a technique that I have tried to use before as well, is memorizing the low E string of my guitar. Can I do it? Probably not. Do, do, nope. See, I'm not even like, not even close. I've been playing guitar for so many years, like since I was 13 and obsessively too. And I still like the, that's that tells you about how my ear works. Like it's not I do not do not have any natural gift towards it. Let me tell you, it's all just been practice. Um, okay. I like where this is going now. Let's just Yeah, we got to add something to this part too. maybe some like Okay, let's just get a bit of a rewind here. I need to like remind myself of the world we're living in, in terms of this song. I don't know if I want to remind myself of the world we're living in otherwise. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to play back from here, which if anyone's new on the stream, you have, might not have heard that, this section before. What we've been listening to, the groovy stuff, is like not what the majority of the song has been, so... Yeah, I like the new slow section too. Sparkly fire. Magic fire, I like that better.
want to add here, perhaps a rhythmic pad on top. Really like the synth bass two line. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's one I was thinking it'd be fun to play on bass. still needs to be smoothed a bit, um, I think, personally. It comes in a bit like abruptly, maybe. I don't know how to do it yet, but we will get that figured out. Oh, so nice to have that space there. figure that out how to do that I think what I'm gonna do now is just take a break on this and I'm gonna just quickly go back to one of the tracks that we started some weeks ago because I had actually forgotten about it <laughs> until a friend of mine mentioned it to me and it's that Babylonian war hop track we were working on there or at least that was the working name of it so I just want to hear it again and it'd be nice to cap the stream off with a different vibe for a second so let's just see if I can find it. So songs, streams probably I called it, live stream. Oh gosh, which one was it? Interactive sesh, that's probably it, hey? Yeah, I think. So many things to load. So for anyone that doesn't know, I'm going to be back again on Tuesday for my other stream series, which I'm recreating the music from a game, a video game called Celeste. You can check out the recordings that are on my channel already. I'm hoping that this next one will be my last one in that series. I'm basically done the song. So just one more session and that will be good. And then we'll move on to another one on uh, the next following Tuesday. So every Tuesday and every Sunday I'm streaming. Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 
Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. So yeah, we'll get back there. So I think this is the track, yeah. Let's get this one going from the start. Yay, Celeste, yes, I agree. Where does it start anyway? Start here. Oh, let's make sure I'm not, uh, yeah, okay. What's happening here? Not getting any sound, not getting any sound from anything that is If someone's got an idea, let me know. I'd Oh, I mean it's probably this. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I'd forgotten about this track. made the transition how we get into the next part that's what we have to do not today but a day
think? I don't think I'm hearing something. What is this? Uh, that's great to hear, Harry. I'm so glad that it's been useful to you. Is this how we had it before? I have to go back to the other stream and watch it. Sometimes like a parameter gets changed and I don't even know. things here. I wonder why we muted them. Probably because they suck. What are they? It's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, I thought maybe they did have more high-end, actually. Do we remove these for some reason, or am I just... drummers do especially in the latin genres where like they've been on a beat for a while with the hi-hat doing something like this one right it's got like all the hi-hat stuff going on um and then at some point they switch that hand over to a ride and they alternate between the ride and the ride bell in some like super cool pattern. And it's just like the best. I wonder if we can just quickly approximate it. Because I'm just curious if I have the skills. Uh, the melody line is, what is the melody line? It's two Omnisphere sounds. It's this. Yes, definitely, Brazilian Samba. So this is like an orchestrion or mellotron sort of sound, and this one is another one, like a string version of the same sound. And then there's also another one. What is this? Oh, no. That's not the right one. This one. And this is the main sound, kind of, and it's layered with these two. So I have three instruments playing the same melody. on the major seventh like that. Uh, hey, that's what I'm about. And then resolving it when it loops. The Mellotrons are factory presets. I don't know about the other one though. I Probably. It's a resonator. No, that can't be that. That must be a different one. No, it's this one. Rippling foils. I probably modified it. I can't remember now what we did. It's a, it's an electric toothbrush playing a hang drum. It's then somehow being processed. Oh, I'm putting it through like a distortion unit and OTT and a bunch of stuff to like get the sound out that way. Let's just do a real quick um, copy of this part over and see if I can get that ride symbol going because I'm just kind of jazzed on it at the moment. I want to see if it's possible. <laughs> hmm, it's gonna be interesting. Um... Thank you. 
these ones definitely need to be bells. And these ones can all be regular hits. All these ones can be bells. Um, and then... Something like this is going to work. Yeah. Amit, welcome. Hello. Sounds decent. Um, it would need some more accents, though. Ding, ding, ding. It's too regular right now. some work but it will be cool um and then here we can just put a real quick so doom boom Let's just play through that one more time and then we'll call it quits for today. Uh, let's go from maybe here.
14. What do you mean? Sorry. going to come together one day. I'll put it on an album or something. That's an easy thing for me to say and then just leave it forever. Thank you everybody for being here. It's wonderful to be with you again as always. Such a blast. Um, yeah, so much fun. So much fun out on a boat. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be streaming again on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. It would be wonderful to see you all then. I know it's very early for some people in um, Europe and everywhere over on that side of the ocean. But it is what it is. I needed a stream that was kind of good for the American side too. So yeah, that's happening. Check out today. There's going to be another a new video coming, a different style of video than I've done before. I'd love to know what you think about it. You can always check out that poll that I put in YouTube to tell me what kinds of videos you're looking for. There's a link to my Discord in the description of this uh stream, which you can join in and chat with me there. Or if you're interested in learning more from me, I've got a course now available on Udemy that the link is there as well. And uh, it's all about composition and theory and all that kind of stuff. At least the part one of the course is there soon. All the other parts will be present and we can talk all about the uh, functions of melody and harmony and bass and all this kind of stuff. So I'm very much, I'm very much looking forward to that. Love to play a game with got the soundtrack in it. Hey, tell me about it. Fingers crossed, one day I'll be making a game soundtrack. Let's see if it happens. Thank you, everybody. It's so good to read from you. Nice to be with you. And I'll see you very soon. Have a great rest of your day, wherever you are. <laughs>